How's it going guys? My name is Dom. Now, when I was growing up and learning CSS, pseudo elements always scared me. Whenever I saw a tutorial about pseudo elements, I just thought, mate, what is this? Or I just, I basically just clicked off the tutorial immediately. Even the name, pseudo elements sounds confusing and complicated but of course like most things in programming or web development once you start using it it all makes sense and to be honest pseudo elements are actually one of the most powerful features of css because you can do things without requiring html which is why you might see plenty of css only solutions that utilize uh, pseudo elements. For example, I've got a whole video dedicated to creating a CSS only tooltip, which of course utilizes pseudo elements. I'll leave a link to that in the top right corner of this video or down below. Anyway, let me talk you through CSS pseudo elements. All right, so first question, what is a pseudo element? Well, basically it is just a virtual element created using CSS, all right? So it's gonna share similar behavior to a standard HTML elements in that you can style it with different CSS properties um, but of course it's not going to be a complete HTML element all right so you can't do everything with it it's only used for styling things all right now of course you have your after and before which are both CSS pseudo elements and that just tells you essentially uh, where they're going to be placed in your document, all right? So it's going to be much easier to explain this using an example. So right here, I've got this paragraph tag on this empty HTML document, right? So I've got no styles applied to this. And we're going to get something like this in the browser. Now, I want to create a second uh, bit of text after this paragraph, okay? So we're gonna do this using a pseudo element, all right? So going up inside my CSS right here, I'm gonna target every paragraph on the page, then say colon, colon, after. So right here, I'm now uh, defining my pseudo element, okay? So the first thing here is gonna be to specify a content property. So inside here, we can say something like, this is a message, all right? Now, if I was to save this and go uh, back in the browser and refresh, we get this right here, okay? So it's that simple to create a pseudo element. Now, it's important to show you guys the inspector right here. So if I was to go in the dev tools here and inspect this paragraph, we have the first text node or the simple text inside this paragraph. Then we have the after pseudo element, all right? So we can see here, it's appearing after the content. If I was to make this a colon, colon before instead, save this and refresh, of course, now the message is gonna appear at the beginning of the paragraph, but also in the DOM here, you can see, of course, it's, you know, positioned before the text. So that is all the before and after means. Now, like I mentioned earlier, you can style these much like standard HTML elements. So for example, I can say background and make this something like cyan. Um, I might also wanna give it some padding. I'll say something like 20 pixels, save this back in the browser, and that is going to work. So that right there is essentially the basics of pseudo elements, all right. Now, where it gets interesting is where you can start using these to create special effects. So you might see this in many uh, sort of like, uh, you know, trick CSS solutions or CSS only solutions. So if I go back inside the text editor right here, I wanna actually empty the content of this pseudo element. So you might find this right here where your content is empty in many tutorials online. This just means, look, I just want like a placeholder element to do something with. So for example, create a circle or create a square, whatever it might be. So as an example, we will uh, leave the background as cyan, but I'm gonna give this here a width of 50 pixels, a height of 100 pixels, and something like a display of block, because in order to specify a height, I need to use a block display type. Save this back in the browser, refresh, and we get this right here. So once again, it works in the same way. I'm just simply styling up this sort of virtual element in CSS, all right? Another example you might see online 
is going to be when people might use positioning on these pseudo elements. So if I was to just give the paragraph tag itself a position of relative, so the reason for this is because technically the paragraph tag is going to be the parent element of this pseudo element down here. So in order for me to use position absolute on the pseudo element, I need to of course have this right here in the parent. And now I can say something like a top of 100 pixels and a left of uh, 300 pixels, right? I can save this back in the browser, refresh, and we get, uh, after scrolling, we get that, uh, that sort of element right there. So that is what you might see online, people sort of using absolute positioning for these pseudo elements, all right? Now, one last thing to cover before closing off today's video is gonna be the ATTR function in CSS, so the attribute function. You might see this here in some scenarios online and I actually use this, I believe, uh, for the tooltip video. If I didn't, I'm sorry, but I know you can use it for tooltips, all right? So basically, if I get rid of this stuff right up here, I wanna simply take us back to a simple example of just having the content and a background color. So going back to this here, I can just save and refresh, and of course we get that right there. I put this as the content, but you can actually grab the content from the paragraph tag itself. So I can say something like data-message equal to uh, this is, this is a message. So right here, I'm simply using an HTML5 data attribute, just a custom attribute to store some data that I wanna store, okay? And now I can actually inject this value inside the pseudo element using the attribute function. So instead of typing out this, I can now say ATTR, then pass in here data-message as my attribute name. I can save this, go back in the browser, and now we get that right there, that message coming from the attribute instead. So that right there is your overview of uh, pseudo elements in CSS. If you wanna learn more about pseudo elements, I recommend you watch some video tutorials explaining how you can build certain things using CSS pseudo elements. And that is all for today's video, guys. Hope you enjoyed that one. If you did and you learned something, drop a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.